When you start figuring out your problems, you're going to start seeing other people that have the same problems that you had. And you're going to say, I wonder why they haven't figured that out yet. And that's like, that's how it starts. It's like, I wonder why they don't, because they're not aware. They don't have the awareness that you have. That's, that can potentially become your purpose. All of your purpose does come from your, your biggest problem, your biggest pain. And if you can find that and you can let it drive you rather than keep you stuck, you can build a career, you can build a life, you can build a business on that. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode, episode number 1,265. Today, for episode number 1,266, sometimes your purpose comes from your biggest pain. Happy Sunday, if you are listening on Sunday. I was on a client call with a podcaster the other day and this podcaster paid us like two or three months ago and then just disappeared they ghosted the kid they didn't they weren't responding to me i was like oh my goodness did i say something wrong what have i done here i still have your money so you you must want to do something here like what's going on and i ended up talking to this person and this is an amazing human being so i talked to this person last weekend and we reconnected we got clear on the goal we got clear on the mission we got clear on what the whole point of the brand is and what problem are we trying to solve and all that stuff and it's interesting because i said who's your demographic and this person said uh primarily early early entrepreneurs but people who are very high achievers high achievers who get in their own way and then she said kind of like me i was like interesting interesting how you solving your biggest problem is also going to help other people solve one of their biggest problems. And a lot of times, and I'm sure you got this all the time, Alan, when I go on other shows, people say, how does somebody find their purpose? Right? That's one of the questions. It's like, honestly, I don't know if it's that simple. I think there's a lot that goes into it. And I always say there's a big difference between purpose and vehicle and all this stuff. But I, I always try to give credit to the one and only Evan Carmichael. And I said, one of our mentors, he said this in one of our interviews, he said, your purpose comes from your deepest pain. And I really do believe that now more than ever, because if you can solve it for yourself and that's kind of your life's work and that's your biggest challenge, but also the thing that's fulfilled you the most, wouldn't you want to share that with other people? So the goal in today's episode is this. I don't want you to think you have everything figured out. I don't want you to think you have to have a perfect understanding of everything, especially the stuff that you're dealing with, because that might be the beauty of you helping other people. You can really help somebody if they're going through something similar to what you've gone through. And it doesn't mean you have to have all the answers. You don't have to have, you know, this is the five-step process. Understand that your pain and your struggle and the problems you have and maybe the potential traumas and triggers, there is way more to them than them just happening. Because for many of us, they happen and then we use them to help them not happen to other people or help people respond in a different way when they do happen happen. So that's really the goal of this episode is to to talk openly about that. And I think Alan and I are also examples of that when it comes to next level you. But you have a, Alan has a podcast, the Conscious Couples Podcast. That's all about couples and relationships. And I know you had struggles with that in the past. I have a podcast about podcasts, which is me trying to figure out, okay, these are the biggest problems we had. Like let me help you solve them. So I think it's it's very unique and it's very interesting how it's set up that way. So we did an episode, Kev, a while back where I actually shared a really funny drawing. So I was on the phone with uh, Amy Diaz, OG Amy, and she's been with us for five and a half or so years, pretty much one of the very first people. Her and Jenna were one of the very first people to get involved with NLU on the team. And uh, we were a hyper-conscious podcast back then. But anyways, she was going through a really tough time and... I drew out this really kind of funny drawing. And and the reason I'm drawing this for her live was because two twofold. One, I wanted it to be funny so that I could help her kind of get in a better place. Uh, and number two, there was actually a lot of like really powerful, like a really powerful lesson in it. And so I'm drawing this this thing and it's basically a, a stick figure of me at the top of the, the little hole. There's like this big hole and Amy's stuck in the bottom of it. She's in a dark hole. She's in a dark place. And she's screaming up to me in this little stick figure drawing of like, Alan, please help. And I'm saying, uh, there's a little thought bubble above my little stick figure. And the thought bubble says something along the lines of, 
don't worry, this will all make sense soon. And then it, it, says uh, there's the right so that's the left portion of the picture the right portion of the picture is a, a picture of a skyscraper and it's fu- it's future amy a stick figure of future amy who's out of the dark hole and saying back to me thank you so much alan for believing me when i was in the dark place um and and really the quote here was me shouting to her from across the way essentially this the deep dark holes we find ourselves in the tools and skills that we need to develop in order to climb out of those dark places actually build skyscrapers. And the skyscraper is the proverbial metaphorical business that you want to start or or charity that you want to do or career you want to have. And so whatever problems you've had in your life, those challenges, those problems created challenges. Those challenges created the necessity for you to retool and, and, and learn. And then when you retooled and and developed skills and learned how to climb out of those dark places, now you have something of value to give others, you know, and, and it's really interesting how everyone seems to be in that same narrative when it comes to what they, what they build their career and their life around. And so if everyone out there listening or watching this break, make this really practical, Every single one of you is better at something than Kevin and I. And it's most likely something that you had to get good at to solve some problem in your life. I have one client who had a really abusive mother and she was really bullied a lot when she was very young because she was adopted and she was of a, of a different, so she was Filipino and she was adopted in Australia and she was, she had a really abusive mother and And she got bullied a lot in school, so she went to therapy. And she still, to this day, talks to me about how that was the best thing ever because she started doing therapy when she was really young. And she tells this story, you know, and again, I'll keep it anonymous, but she tells this story about how my mom wanted me to go to therapy because she thought I needed fixing. When in reality, it was my mom who was the one who was abusive in hindsight. But joke's on her. Now I have all this personal development and now I'm you know, this incredible person. And again, she's, she's very confident and she is wonderful, but that's the thing. What was once a challenge and a problem and a dark hole that she had to climb out of. Now she went to therapy and now she's more innerly, innerly. She's more developed inwardly than most people ever will be because of that challenge. And so again, we've all heard, it's not what happens to you. It's what you do about it. And it really comes down to this. Sometimes your purpose comes from your biggest problem. I think that that makes perfect sense. And the very last piece of this, Kev, is I'll tell this story really briefly. Emilia had a dream when she was a little kid. Emilia is my beautiful girlfriend for the new listeners. She had a dream when she was a kid to go see the Great Barrier Reef. And she went on this trip and she studied abroad in London and all this stuff. And she traveled, traveled, traveled. And she went to see the Great Barrier Reef and it was the Great Barrier Graveyard. And so her dream was to see this and she went and scuba dived and saw that it was literally all dead. And for her, that bothered her so much. She went through like some depression with that. She was very upset what we're doing to the world, the environment. And she tells me about this stuff and she'll say like, I can't stand how many people litter. Like, what is the deal with this? And I, and I turn to her and I say, sweetheart, that's supposed to bother you. We have this weird relationship with our own frustration. And I said, it's supposed to bother you. It's your purpose. If it wasn't your purpose, it wouldn't bother you. (laughs) You know? And so everyone out there listening, hopefully you can think about what is it that bothers me so much? Is it bullies? Is it, you know, kids without families? Is it people not being into self-improvement? That's mine for sure. That bothers me so deeply. It, it literally frustrates the hell out of me that more people aren't into self-improvement. That's the obvious solution, in my opinion. But guess what? That's what I needed growing up. I'm coaching an 18-year-old right now, and I just, every time I coach this young man, I'm like, oh my God, I wish so deeply that I had me in my corner back then. Me now in my corner back then. But someone like me in my corner, because I didn't have any male role models, neither Kevin nor I did. So now what do we want to be? Male role models. See, all of your purpose does come from your deep, your biggest problem, your biggest pain. And if you can find that and you can let it drive you rather than keep you stuck, 
you can build a career, you can build a life, you can build a business on that. Well, and I think it feels more aligned. I think that's the that's the interesting thing is I think a lot of us run from our pasts. We run from our problems, our pains, our fears, the traumas, when there's a lot of answers in them. There's a lot of hints. There's a lot of answers. There's a lot of directions. There's a treasure map. You know, there's a lot that goes into that. And I think when you start talking about your problems, not even when you start talking about it, because maybe that's not the best the best approach for people, but when you start figuring out your problems, you're going to start seeing other people that have the same problems that you had. And you're going to say, I wonder why they haven't figured that out yet. And that's like, that's how it starts. It's like, I wonder why they don't, because they're not aware. They don't have the awareness that you have. That's That can potentially become your purpose, to raise their awareness to what you know now as common, where five years ago, maybe you didn't. And again, even on, if you think about it, I mean, obviously there's levels to this, but one of the reasons I'm so passionate about podcasting is because I had to learn so much to figure out how to succeed. Oh, so now yeah, I want to help other people, right? I want to help other people learn what actually matters. Not, not, you know, this is the cheat code. Like, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to do that. When I was in my early twenties, I became a personal trainer because for me, I was always, one of my problems was how do I get stronger? How do I get in better shape? And then it was like, I wonder why nobody else is doing this. All right, let me help. Let me help. And that wasn't, you know, that didn't end up being what I wanted. But yeah, I, this is why I think it's so important to have a, it doesn't have to be a good relationship, doesn't have to be a great relationship, doesn't have to be a perfect relationship, but some sort of relationship with your past. Because I'm convinced that's where your purpose is. I am convinced your purpose is somewhere locked away. Maybe you're running from it. Maybe you're hiding from it. Yes, go try new things. Try a bunch of stuff. Get new experiences. Get new inputs, of course, always. But I, my belief is that your purpose is buried somewhere in your past. And until you start looking, right? So this is, I say this on podcasts all the time. When I, I used to drive a truck. When I drove a truck, I used to listen to WAAF. We've had Daniel Murr on twice, I think, two, three times maybe. And I shout used to say- Shout out to Danielle. She shout listens. out to Danielle. Yeah. Um, I used to say, imagine, imagine what it would be like if you could just go talk into a microphone for four hours a day and that was your job. Now I, now I know there's way more that goes into it, but <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> Okay, interesting. <laughs> I was doing raps. I literally ordered a microphone and figured out how to like use the microphone when I was rapping in, I don't know, maybe this was like my late teens probably. All right, interesting. I was doing, I remember doing a post, and this I think this was early. If you spent as much time working on yourself as you spent complaining on social media, you probably wouldn't have much to complain about on social media. I remember doing like posts like that that was hyper-conscious. That was next level. Okay, interesting, right? And then Alan and I do an interview and I say, imagine if you could do that for a living. Like it's the, all the hints are there. There's hints on the map. And if I, if I didn't reflect, I don't know if I would really understand that's what I wanted to be doing. That's what I was supposed to be doing. Hi, my name's John Larito, and I just wanted to uh, give a big shout out to Kevin Palmieri. I had uh, reached out to him. He had been referred to me when I had shared with a friend of mine some interest in uh, doing a podcast. And he said, you've got to use Kevin. He's fantastic. He's the best around. He'll get you started and off the ground and and uh, soaring high in no time. And take it from somebody who knows nothing about podcasting other than maybe saying a few things. But as far as behind the scenes, the startup, everything, I knew nothing. Uh, Kevin was phenomenal in terms of leading me through the whole process and not just easy to work with, but really, really knows his stuff. A great combination between leading me through all the stuff I had no idea what I was doing, but also really listening to me and understanding what it was I was trying to accomplish and what my vision is. So whether you're looking for somebody to, to help you and get you started or somebody as I've done where I'm putting it entirely in his hands because I've got total trust and confidence in him and he is a true pro and easy to work with, any of those ends of the spectrum you're going to have a lot of success and a lot of fun working with Kevin. Trust me. Thanks. The last piece I'll say is if it doesn't get you emotional, it's not going to drive you at the level that you need to win at the high levels. And and by win, I mean, let me, let me rephrase win because that's not the, the, what I mean. You're not going to, you're not going to have the drive that is necessary to maximize your potential and your greatest level of contribution if it doesn't make you emotional. 
Like it, it, it needs to be, and, and it won't make you emotional if it hasn't hurt you in some way. I don't, it's, it's life. Jim Rohn says life is set up in weird ways. That is so true. I don't know why this is necessarily, but I do know that from all the coaching I've done with, at this point, dozens, if not hundreds of different individuals all over the world, and I'm about to surpass 4,000 sessions, you just, bec- it becomes very clear. And, and the very last thing I'll say here is we have passions which are things that you love to do even when they suck. Doesn't mean you always want to do them, but you're always glad you did. We have a purpose which comes from pain and challenge and your past, most likely. And then you have profitability, which is how do you make money doing it so that you can actually make a living? And that's what Kevin and I have done. And it's totally possible for other people, but if you get them wrong, like... It's very hard to be driven at the highest levels when it's not something that's emotional for you. And and ironically, we run from the things that hurt the most, and including myself. That's why I'm such an advocate for therapy. Because in therapy, what you're doing is going back to the past to really reprocess it, and there's a bunch of different modalities and all that. But it's been very fascinating for me in therapy to really go back and like look at what happened and how it worked and what how it shaped me and why I why I ended up going the way that I went and when you you really do uncover like and it starts to make a lot more sense it starts to make a lot more sense and the, the and then you can double and triple and quadruple down on your purpose you're not going to like double down on something you're uncertain about you know, so you got to do the exploration and then double down and then explore again and then double down. And it's a whole thing. It is. If you think about um, if somebody, if something happened and you say, yeah, I took it very personally. Like, you know, Alan said something to me or whatever it is. Just as an example, Alan said something to me. It's like, <laughs> we yeah, always took- use me in those examples. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got it. Well, I said something and Alan took it very, either way. What does that mean? <laughs> that mean it hurt me and now I'm very focused on it. I'm focused on that. I'm not focused on anything else. I'm focused on the fact that I took that personally. I that that hit me at a character level, that hit me at a emotional level, that hit me at the being of who I am level. I think your purpose should be personal. I really do. You 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 should have emotions around it. You should have fears around it. You should have a layer of responsibility around it. Right? right. I I always say it's I feel a responsibility to show up 7 times a week. I don't always want to right? It's not, it's not what it's about. For me, it's, it's a responsibility. Your purpose is a responsibility. That's my, that's my belief. Now, again, I take that very seriously and we tend to crank things up to the max, but God, that would be a fire book title. What? Your purpose is your responsibility. It's yours, man. Ooh, it's all yours. Great book title. That's you though. That's no, you I'm think. not going to write it. I'm no, not interested. Okay. Podcast <laughs> Grab a ghostwriter, so. talking to a mic. I could talk into a mic. Yeah, there you go. We'll see. We'll, we'll see. I'm see what just happens. Saying, just throwing it out there. Well, I appreciate you know? that. But I, that's my that's kind of how I think about it. I, I think that it's almost like the stuff that we're afraid to connect to. That's what we're supposed to connect to to help other people avoid the same problems we had. Hundred percent. You know, there's there's definitely a lot of potential in the pain. That is that's the last thing I'll say. Well said. Very hey, well said. Thank you so much. I just got off a podcast right before this, so I am. I thought I was the, 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 it's interesting. You asked me one time all those years ago and all those years ago, yeah, right. <laughs> this is a uh, second episode of the hyperconscious podcast. We are, mm-hmm. you're, you're drinking Guinness and I'm drinking Red Bull 10 a.m. and we're in your living room in New Hampshire and you say, how does someone find their purpose? And I took you through an echelon of the Eulerian destiny and yeah, yeah. it's just interesting because now here we are six years later and you're saying it and articulating it better than I did by a significant <laughs> margin, you well, know? Six years is a long time, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a fact. Well, that was a long time ago, and at that point, I probably would have said the same thing. It's like, well, it's a mix of these eight things, and if you land right in the middle, that's your purpose, son. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's like, I don't really know. I don't really know the answer. That's the, that's what I always say is like, I don't know. This is what I think, but who knows? I could be completely How ironic. Off. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas back then you're like, this is the answer. Yeah, the answer <laughs> you know? is whatever I say is the answer. Now I always I said this on a podcast I was just on. I said you have to filter every be- every piece of information you get through your own lens. Like even though I'm the guest here, make sure you're questioning everything I say. Mm-hmm. This is from my experience. I I don't know unless your experience, unless me helping you is my purpose, which 
I do feel it is, then I don't necessarily know what you're going through, right? I know our audience better than any audience, and that's there's a reason for that. But I that's that's why it's so important to know who you're talking to because have you been through what I've been through? Do you have my experiences? I can help you at a deeper level if you have. That's it. Hundred percent. You dig? Well said. Thank you. Next level nation. April 1st, 2023, you and 49 other amazing human beings in a room with Alan, myself, some of the Next Level You team. And our focus for this event is to help you shift your identity. I know that sounds heavy. I know that probably is scary and intimidating. But think of it this way. It's a get together with a bunch of friends who have similar core values. They want the same thing. They have big goals and they have big dreams and they finally want their permission to talk about that. That is what we're going to do in this room. April 1st, 2023, Worcester, Mass, Next Level Live. I had a really cool moment earlier. I'm on the phone with a client and we have a very, very powerful coaching session, aspiration, goals, dreams. Awesome, awesome. And then I I get off uh, the coaching session and I have a little block between then and now. And I go in Next Level Nation, which is our private Facebook group. And I see my client in there, Gabby, shout out to Gabby, doing an NLYOU live, which is essentially we have Amy Lenius on the team interviewing community members about their experiences. And it was just really cool to each one teach one. This group is a place where you are safe to share your story. You are encouraged to share your story. And there's one part of this NLU live that I really enjoyed thoroughly. I only watched the first half so far. But in the first half, uh, Gabby essentially said something along the lines of, if you had heard me talk like this five years ago, you would have been like, Gab, that's not you. And so she's like, I've transformed so much. And I'm, I know it's kind of weird. And, and I commented and I said, this is where weird is encouraged. Mm. This is where weird is encouraged. And so that's the way I would describe Next Level Nation is you feel safe to be your own weird. And you're not going to be made fun of. And it's really quite alarming how few places there are in life where you won't be made fun of yeah. for your weird. Um, I didn't realize, you know, how rare that is. So it's a special place. Um, anyone who's ever been disrespectful got booted. I hope you join us. Next Level Nation tomorrow for episode number 1,267. This is this is a Kevin episode right here, Jeff. One small, simple habit that changed Kevin's life. So you don't even have to come if you don't want. Okay, perfect. I can do it without you. You can join if you want. No, that, that, I'm very excited for that. That's Again, I get asked a lot of questions on podcasts that make me think of things that I don't necessarily normally think of. And then it's like, interesting. That would be a really valuable topic for the audience. So make sure you join us tomorrow. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. Tomorrow is Monday. Start the week off right with NLU in your pocket, bright and early. As always, we love you, appreciate you, grateful for each and every one of you. And I mean that. And at NLU, we do not have fans. We have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. Please reach out.